Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Shantae. We got our first uh, legendary stone, which produces an infinite amount of water, which would be infinitely more useful to the average person in town and country than building a giant robot for. But hey, whatever. We're not, you know, scientists trying to, you know, build a steam engine or evil pirate trying to take over the world or something. <laughs> almost done. Almost done. I got ten more seconds before people realize there's no audio here for the first thirty seconds. Well, now I, well now I, well now I have to leave it in because now you mentioned it out. <laughs> I thought you weren't going to do anything with it, and you were trying your damnedest to cover your tracks by uh, providing commentary. Get the fuck on a commentary channel. That's crazy. I know, right? Oh, there it goes. Music to my ears. It is music to your ears, actually. Uh, hey, excellent. So we have to go to the uh, next dungeon, which I believe is the... Hey, we really like uh, Link's Awakening DX. <laughs> Uh, DX specifically. Yeah, because it's a color dungeon. No one plays the original release anymore. Mm, there's no reason to. I, I'm i curious about that because I don't think I've ever experienced the original Game Boy release of Link's Awakening. It is always DX that is on everyone's minds when talking about I, it. I have the original. It's, it's the same game. It's just black and white and without the color dungeon. It doesn't have the color dungeon, it doesn't have the photography well, uh, side yeah, quest. Yeah, that too, but I never used the photography side quest regardless, so. Why don't you like fun? Well, I never owned a Game Boy printer. <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't do it for that Game Boy printer, you just did it because you wanted pictures. Little vignettes, yeah. Nobody did it for the Game Boy printer. They're saying they did it online. That's right, I'm calling you out, Jeff. Well, I mean... This I, is Jeopardy. I didn't have time to look for pictures. I was too busy looking for secret seashells. Do you know how many squares... <laughs> do you know how many squares there are in that game? You have to dig with the shovel to find those if you're playing blind. <laughs> I don't even remember if, like, the original Link's Awakening uh, DX or otherwise had some sort of seashell radar. I don't think it did. The remake does, but... No, the remake does, yeah. The remake's better for it, but... No, I the, like the the OG Back in game. my day, we just had to dig square by square. That sounds so fun. I, I, I'd adventurous. say, and we liked it, like some old man shaking my fist at a <laughs> cloud. But the truth is, we didn't like it. It was a time sink. It was it was blatantly there to make up for the fact that the game was shorter than li than Link to the Past, which you know it didn't really need to because the game is long enough as it is. The history of that game is weird because it was supposed to be a Game Boy version of Link to the Past, but. I mean, you can still make the argument that it is. Like, obviously, like, Koholan Island is not Hyrule. Like, it's different enough. But it's like, man, they really wanted to just fucking make it. Well, Link to I the mean, Past a lot of the stuff is in the same general place, so, you know. It, uh, is it? I'll have to compare the maps again. But. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> that is a game that I, I, I've grown more respect for uh, over the past decade, but man, my first playthrough, that was fucking miserable. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was a game it, it's Boy, hard. Man. Yeah, it, it's hard to go back to Zelda games where you only ever have one item slot for your sub-weapon or item and anything. It depends on the game, because I can go back to Zelda 1. Like in Zelda 2, more than I can can Link's Awakening, which I know sounds so fucking weird <laughs> uh, and probably uh, heretical to some Zelda fans, but... Well, in Zelda 1, you only have, like, a few things you're actively using most yeah. of the time, whereas... It benefits from its limitations. Yeah, so whereas Link's Awakening, like, you have to equip everything... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> sometimes including <laughs> including the power bracelet for some reason. Some sometimes you have to like you have to like even put away your sword because you need like rocks feather and the running and the running power up whatever. The Pegasus boots, yeah. Pegasus, yeah, you need the Pegasus boots and you need rocks feather at the same time to do a running jump, and then you have to unequip both of those and put your sword back on because you only needed it to jump over one peg. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right i'm tired <laughs> oh my god like there is you can still make the argument that there's still merit in playing the original release but the switch remake just fucking does so much well for that game's core design i mean it, it kind of just makes it link to the past again <laughs> with the cutesy art style but like i just fucking love the switch remake more i like the, the one the one kind of advantage i think 
to the Link's Awakening gameplay style over A Link to the Past is the way the shield works when you use it. It's actually a shield that yeah. you hold up instead of just being something you have to awkwardly position and hope it works. Uh, which I've never been able to get around when it... It's kind of weird, like, halfway through your playthrough Links to the Past when you, like, accidentally block a projectile with your red shield. Like, wait, the shield, the shield? <laughs> it's like, yeah, it is. <laughs> uh... Uh, okay. Firefly. So, so one of the things that I can't quite get past with the graphical style of the original Shantae is the way she goes all narrow-eyed at the screen when she gets ready to dance. Yeah, what, it's her like, trying to do a seductive look thing? Yeah, I think it's I think it's her attempt at trying to be seductive. It's because there's so few pixels that it looks super exaggerated. So it's like... She looks a little drunk. <laughs> yeah, like fucking drunk, or she ripped one and she's not telling you. <laughs> like, <laughs> I like that interpretation. I think it's the best. Yeah, but still, like, it, it's very weird. Also, this game does that thing where if you lose a life, you only come back with three hearts, even if you have more than three hearts. Come to think of it, maybe that's why she's wiggling. Huh. Oh, God. <laughs> I was hoping we would drop that. Like that. <laughs> ah, come on. Hold on. I want to go back to the fucking Shantae part where they discuss farts. Oh, well, it's better than the fucking fascism <laughs> that they went into Summit Remake. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Same guy, too. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I want to know, like, in what universe little stub-armed sphere people arose that learned how to throw sphere spears? Because, like, with arms that short, throwing a spear is quite the accomplishment. Well, I would say it's probably a, 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 an evolutionary necessity because their arms are so short. Oh, yeah. They, they evolved the strongest arm muscles known to man or beast. But they're yeah. they're limited by the fact that they they only have a, 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 a like a, a half a centimeter of arm muscle per arm. I was gonna say, dude, it's like that fucking arm is the size of a bee's <laughs> dick. So they gotta learn how to throw spears. Uh. Oh, I like. Away we go. I like how the coloring at night makes like. That, that lady NPC in town look like she's actually one of Roddy Tops' zombies. Yeah. So one of the things we got was a jump kick attack, which does a lot of damage. But you, a lot of damage, be... but it's shorter length than the fucking hair. <laughs> I mean, a lot of cool damage, yeah. Frickin' disintegrated her flesh and sent her bones flying across the screen. <laughs> yeah, it's really weird how, like, the Nagas, like, in every game, I would think, like, just fucking explode into a pile of bones. It's very Mortal Kombat. And it's... But it's also, fuck, what a time to demonstrate the new attacks at night when the enemies take twice as much to kill. Yeah, I'm glad they never brought this okay, mechanic there back. I don't mind day and night systems. It depends on just what happens or what you do with it. You know, using it as just an excuse to just make enemies beefier is like, eh, that's boring. That's what pain in the ass. Because you're basically telling me don't travel at night. Yeah, I mean, that's fine for a game like, say, Final Fantasy 15, where there's, like, a camping mechanic, and there are, there are yeah. also definite experience rewards to putting up with the risk of being out at night, and there are quests that require you to. I was gonna say, like, th it was it was worth it to fight demons. Yeah, though. I mean, like, one, like they made one of the first things I do every time I play that game is go out and fight an iron giant for the massive experience it gives you. <laughs> it takes forever, but it's totally doable. It was doable even before you could cheese it as prompto. Um, but like. They also have, like, hunts that you can only do at night and that sort of thing. Like, that's the kind of thing that makes a day-night cycle worth it in a game. Stuff that, like, yeah, nighttime is more challenging. It should... Oh, Jesus Christ, you almost fucking ate it. <laughs> <laughs> nighttime is more challenging. It's it's more perilous. It's supposed to be. That's what nighttime feels like. Speaking as a rideshare driver, nighttime is so stressful. But, um... 
Whichever way you run to our Iron Giant. <laughs> well, no, but like I went out like at 3 a.m. yesterday, and like the first thing that happened, not five minutes out from my house, was that a deer ran out into the road and and slammed into the side of a car in front of me. The deer was all right. It got back up and ran away, but probably scared the shit out of the driver. <laughs> <laughs> but I wasn't. In fact, I'm doing this commentary for the hospital. <laughs> I mean, that, that's that's literally happened to me before, so. What, doing a commentary from the hospital? No, a uh, deer ram and just come out, comes out of nowhere and rams into my car. I, I never had a... Okay, so similar but not quite a similar experience where... Uh, my friend Jacob and I were going to his parents' folks uh, for... Uh, for his parents' place, sorry, parents' place, uh, one weekend during college, and uh, his parents' place live in the middle of bumfuck nowhere, uh, Pennsylvania, a lot of farmland, which means no street lights whatsoever. Beautiful starry skies, but you can see shit. And we just had to rely on our Jeep lights to get on the dirt road, and before you know it, there was this creeping shadow that just fucking jumped in front of the Jeep and smacked the corner of the fender. Ooh. And you still don't uh, know what it was? And... Get, I'm going to assume it's a deer, Ryan. I have to believe it was a deer. <laughs> because if it was a person, I might be an accessory to murder. But, uh, no, it was a deer. Uh, it, it ran across the the damn lot, but it scared the fucking shit out of me. I've never had a, a situation where a deer ran specifically in front of my car. I did have an extremely, like, apathetic cat this one night who was just sitting in the middle of the street <laughs> and would not respond as I like edged closer to it and flashed my headlights I had to get out and shoo it away and it would not move until I was like literally right on top of it <laughs> <laughs> go around <laughs> I don't see your name I mean this I would road. have gone around but like it was one of those narrow residential streets where like cars are parked on both sides and it's one way right. and you you don't oh, even have boy. room for a k-turn so I had to get it out of the way otherwise I wasn't going anywhere I, I mean I Wait, I could have it? reversed my way off the street but uh, <laughs> I'm not familiar with all driving terminology k-turn k uh, is like a u-turn except it's in the shape of a k because you don't have room to do a complete u-turn you turn oh so you go forward and then you go back yeah, yeah, and yeah. then you go forward again. people pe and put one foot people forward. nowadays use the word u-turn to describe any turn where you're going in the opposite direction at the end but it's actually right. supposed to just be the turn that's shaped like a u there are other turn names for other turn types but like no one knows what they are anymore they're like the sectors in midgar they used to have names and now they don't <laughs> Well, there's the wrong turn. <laughs> what the fu what what the hell is Jabba the fucking hut doing here? I like the guy that was designed off of a scrotum. He looks like one of those mutant monsters from Lisa. Happy scrotum. Ugh. We're not gonna talk to the guy that looks like a <laughs> purple bird. <brick. No. laughs> it's like we've wandered into in, in into Mos Eisley from Star Wars. It's really weird, like, the inhabitants of this place are really just different types of creatures that I don't think the series ever did again. Because no. the next time we'll see these guys, we're, like, in hell. <laughs> <laughs> in Pirate's Curse. Also, Sky looks very different. She's uh, not, she's not yeah, blonde she's, Yeah, she's not blonde. Black hair. And uh, she did not have a dedicated theme at this point. The the team, the, the her theme was just repurposed from the this game's Watertown theme. Yes. Uh, for the better, though, because I now associate that thing with Sky, and it's a it's one of my favorite tracks in the series. I sold my war my warbirds, so I'm here on an egg hunt. Well, why did you do something stupid like that? <laughs> Probably to make money. That's what she she raises birds. That's what she does. Oh, that's kind of always been her shtick. Yeah, but, but, but why did you sell them before they laid eggs? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, maybe, maybe they did, and that's Look, all we're looking over there. I don't think those are trophies. If you're going to make any sort of living off of birds, they need to lay eggs before you sell them. That's how, like, like agriculture and livestock work. It's like selling all your produce, but not planting any seeds. Scuttle Town's no hole, but, like, the name... Scuttle Town suggests a crater. Come on. Also, that bird is made of rubber. 
fucking. <laughs> I think it's just bobbing its head up and down. Like that's the effect it's going for. But it looks like a fucking pet dispenser. Also, or it's Sky... bobbing its head to techno. Also, Sky, why? Yeah. Where is the wind coming from, and why can't I feel it? <laughs> well, there's a sky roof. There's a skyline. Yeah, it's, got, it's so coming from the skyline. It's not taking that under it. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a weirdly specific wind. Do you have There's a weirder things in this world? Do you have a ceiling fan hidden up there? How did your bird fly through it? <laughs> no, don't fly Skillfully. back. In. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say well, goodbye, Red. Right, <laughs> right through the ceiling. Fan. Now I need another egg. Uh, <laughs> well, no, she sent wrench to help well, it's us. Okay. Yeah. It's okay. I'm about to hatch another wrench. What? <laughs> That's the name of the bird. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Not an actual fucking wrench. <laughs> That'd be some weird shit. The fucking egg crack is like, oh, wait, what? I mean, that's functionally Pokemon. What? <laughs> yeah, I guess if you're hatching an egg, and a fucking set of keys come out of it. Or a gear system, or... <laughs> yeah, a gear system, or... A magnet. Another egg. <laughs> I always that is weird that you can hatch an egg and an execute comes out. <laughs> I always forget how, like, inventory items in old Game Boy games had to have, like, four letters on them. Oh, I love limitations. <laughs> that's what my, that, like, that's half of the fun of like the original Final Fantasy. Ah, uh, Pearl. <laughs> yeah, no, not even Pearl. The, 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 the Pearl was censorship. That wasn't so much limitation. Yeah, it actually has one more letter uh, than it should. <laughs> but like original FF one, like I said, it's all a damn time. I love those damn spell names. I like rub. <laughs> <laughs> I blame Dragon Quest for that kind of thing, to be honest, because their spell names are just beautiful. No, you see, but Dragon Quest was deliberate. Yeah, I know. And Dragon Quest is a... I mean, you've you probably seen the original Dragon Quest on NES. It uses a way more flowery language than the original Final Fantasy. Because very Dungeons and Dragons inspired, which is ironic considering that Final Fantasy was just Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> I mean, that is that is one of my favorite uh, pro ZD bits. The, fu the funny well, thing about... The, the, he's, uh, he's confronting the final boss and he's just like, All right, Dragon Master, it's time to take you down. Kazooie Kaplamo Frizzle Bazooie. <laughs> the funny thing about the spell point system in Final Fantasy One is that like it's 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 mimicking Dungeons and Dragons, but it's it's actually an easier version of the point system. And it's like what Dungeons and Dragons would eventually start using when they tried to make their own system less tedious. So like in a way, Final Fantasy was ahead of its time, is what I'm saying. Yeah, okay. I mean, you think spell points in Final Fantasy are tedious to deal with. Imagine having to specifically decide ahead of time what three spells you will be using for the entire day. <laughs> how many magic missiles you get to cast. <laughs> amazing. And how many grease spells... <laughs> You say grease? Well, yeah, you can uh, like cover the floor in grease and. Uh, That's a look, spell. Look, when you only have three spells per day, putting everyone to sleep no, or limiting like their mobility that... is actually a lot better than the damage Listen, spells. <laughs> spreading grease on the fucking floor ain't magic. Like, that's Monday. I can do that shit right now. I mean... I wouldn't call it a spell. I mean, like, it's magical grease that sticks around and then disappears after a set time, but whatever. The... Grease sticks around naturally look, anyway. It's look, grease. The point is, it's a lot easier than carrying a bucket. No, no, I think I'm starting. To, I'm starting to feel like I got it's, gypped. It's less easier. <laughs> it, it's less. T it, 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 it takes a lot less effort than carrying a bucket. You said this was magical it grease. It is. It takes a lot less effort than carrying a bucket. It just appears. Also, have you tried? Have you tried like fighting, like fighting, doing sword play, while the floor is covered in oil? It, it doesn't work. You kind of. Oh, I thought he was like, "Why you're covered in grease?" You, you, you kind <laughs> makes you harder to grab. You kind of need your footing, <laughs> otherwise you end up falling on your sword or something. Okay, so more nagas. Yep. Somehow they always manage to catch you with that freaking homing so sonar attack. Yeah, that's an annoying attack, honestly, but. Uh, it has a fixed trajectory yeah. though, so if you're like really close to them, it always whiffs yeah. you. These guys though, really fucking weird and phallic. Yeah. <laughs> I know the scorpions, but still. What? What is the scorpion guy based on? Is that like an actual creature, like the Nagas? Uh, he's based off Dwayne Johnson from Scorpion um, King. 
Okay. Really missed the point of that movie, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Doesn't even look like The Rock. Okay, so, like... F- In actuality, I do not. Yeah, I'm, like, wondering if there's an actual mythological creature that it's based on, like the Nagas. But, I mean, probably. <laughs> I mean, everything that every time we ask a question of a wonder of this or that, it, it, it is always a simple Google search away, or we just never ask to do it. I mean, the thing is, a lot of old mythological monsters and stuff from back to, from, you know, ye olden times are basically, what if we put one thing and combined it with another? Well, I mean, in a lot of cases, it, it like, uh, in a lot of cases, it was just combine an animal with a human because that was the way, that was the easiest way for people to relate to the mythological figures they were creating. Uh, They were first created by Tiamat in order to wage war against the younger gods for the murder of her maid, Apsu. In the Epic of Gilgamesh, they stand guard outside the gates of the sun god, Shamash, at the mountains of Mashu. These give entrance to Kernugi, the land of darkness. Kablooey, huh. kablam for Vizzle. <laughs> which, which, what myth is this? Epic of Gilgamesh. This uh, Epic of Gilgamesh. Like, all right. So it says here that scorpion men are featured in several Akkadian language myths, including, uh, God, I'm probably going to butcher this, the Enuma Elish and the Babylonian version of the Epic of Gilgamesh. Huh. We're good for your education. Yeah, you see that shit? Fucking yeah! Take our word for it. like if you're if you're gonna cite that, you cite brain scratch, <laughs> not Wikipedia. Uh, 